Arthur, this is a chance for you to show a different side of yourself so the public can see who you really are. And I don't think you should smoke. I think it makes you look cavalier. Okay. We need to use this time to show people that you're human. They need to understand you are sick, delusional. Mm -hmm. You're not Joker. You're Arthur Fleck. Hmm? Don't worry. You're going to be great. <laughs> Arthur. Hey, panelists. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. And I'm Robert. <laughs> and this is Panels of Pixels podcast. And this episode of the podcast, we're going to be covering Joker Fully Adieu from 2024, which just came out, uh, which is a uh, sequel to what? Joker? Mm -hmm. Joker. Yeah, the first out, Joker. Which came out what? Four years ago? Uh, good question. Yes. I think it's 2008, <laughs> 2019. I think it's 2019. Oh, five years ago. Jeez. <laughs> Rob's looking. Yeah, I'm looking. So Joker He's... came out in 2019. Wow. Yay. Yeah, I so... get a sticker. <laughs> so it came out during, literally during the pandemic. So everybody was like, oh, we're going to watch this now. So, um, which I'm sure lifted everyone's spirits. <laughs> At the time, it was very interesting, intriguing for the first Joker movie and did very well. So uh, with that, uh, Becky, could you read us the synopsis of the actual film that we're covering yes. today? Joker Foley Adieu finds Arthur Fleck institutionalized at Arkham, awaiting trial for his crimes as Joker. While struggling with his dual identity, Arthur not only stumbles upon true love, but also finds the music that's always been inside him. And boy, did they hammer that home. <laughs> well, they had to hire somebody to come in who is musically inclined, which was Lady Gaga. I didn't hate her. I, I honestly, as an artist, I can't hate her. She's very entertaining. She has, uh, I'm not saying entertaining in a sense of musically, but I'm saying visually as well. So uh, I'm very intrigued with her as a uh, character in music and film. Because uh, as we all know, she had done A Star is Born. And I thought she did well with that, uh, with that remake. Because, you know, the original was, you know, with uh, A Star is Born. And not to digress, everybody, but the fact is A Star is Born was uh, starring at that time, originally back in, what, the, the late 70s, early 80s, uh, Chris Christopherson and Barbara Streisand. And I thought that her and, uh, what is it, Bradley Cooper and mm -hmm. and her... Well, Lady Star Gaga. is Born is, uh, this, that was the third, um, version. version. Yeah, that they made. Yeah. I haven't seen any of them. What? <laughs> <laughs> Not a one. Really? Okay. No. Yeah. They're, they're entertaining and they are, they do pull the tears from your eyes, honestly, in some way. Depends on which one you watch, but, uh, they do. And uh, I thought Lady Gaga did very well with it. Uh, Bradley Cooper was great in it. Uh, Chris 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 Christopherson, uh, and then uh, Bart Streisand did very well in the seventies. And then there was one before that too. There was. Um, trying to think who it was. Let me see here. Once again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh. 
So yeah, the one in 1976 was with uh, Chris Christopherson and Barbara Streisand. Mm-hmm. And then there was a, uh, let's see here. By the way, you could have probably cut this part here since it's taking so long. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Um, the original was in 1937. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So, which included uh, what? Previous remakes of the original 1937 film includes the 1954 musical, the 1976 rock musical, the Bollywood romance one. (laughs) There was one from (laughs) Bollywood. (laughs) Um, There's one with Jamie Foxx in 2000? What? I see. However... Oh, no, it, Jamie Foxx and Oliver Stone was seriously interested in remaking the film. That would have been a very different movie. It would be more hip-hop. <laughs> or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. It was also announced that Clint Eastwood was in talks to direct Beyonce in a third American remake. Wow. Interesting. So there was a lot of, there was a lot of people. But, yeah, they, I, I guess the original was in 1937. Yeah. Well, the the fact is is that they basically within this particular movie for Joker two as it were uh, they used Lady Gaga because of her musical prowess and her acting prowess because she was in that particular movie and honestly you know lady gaga is talented uh, honestly uh she is a talented person as far as being an actress as well as a uh, singer and uh an actual songwriter as well so i i think they try to market this movie on this but well this mar- this movie did get some, I mean, a lot of marketing, and it was probably one of the most anticipated movies of the entire year. Yeah, uh, especially ever since it, it got it, uh, you know, announced. I have never been. It's funny. I've never been a Lady Gaga fan, especially in the beginning of her career. I really, really? didn't like. Yeah, I never liked her because of the theatrics. Hmm. Okay. I hate. I hate celebrities with all the theatrics and all this stuff. Oh, it just. The- the meat suit and yeah, and yeah, that I didn't like that either. But, but I love her music. Yeah, but <laughs> over the years, you know, just listening to her music and especially when she was singing with uh, Tony Bennett, mm-hmm. um, the woman is just absolutely incredible. You know, she has a, she has an incredible voice. Yeah, she's got a range. So I, I started liking some of the stuff that she did, and I don't mind, you know, watching her. I think she's still a little eccentric out there. But that being said, I think for this movie, she was so underutilized. It was incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. She oh. she she has range with whether, whether it be for acting jobs or music musical jobs, as I like to say it. Yeah, no, her acting is pretty. You know, acting is pretty good. It's I'm not going to say it's uh, uh, well. I mean, it's I'll say it's, it is Academy Oscar worthy because she did get she did get nominated, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that being said, I mean, it's not like I would go to the theater to watch a Lady Gaga movie. Yeah. You know, that, you know so. But that being said, I mean, I just, um, yeah, this movie, and I'll start it off. I mean, this movie was disappointing to me because of so many reasons. Uh, I think that Todd Phillips did an incredible job with the first movie, a movie mm-hmm. that only cost $55 million and went ahead and grossed over a billion dollars. Yeah. I came out of the first movie out of the theater. Like I saw something that I have never seen in my life. First of all, they yes. took a, they took a character from a comic book and really, really went deep inside of what maybe this, you know, character can actually uh, be. But it also touched upon a lot, uh, you know, on mental health and just a lot of, the, and especially the look of New York 
even though it's Gotham, but it was like New York in the back in the seventies. Um, yeah, which I definitely remember. <laughs> but, yeah, same here. But, yeah, but that means that. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's it was just incredible, and I think Joaquin Phoenix did a a fantastic job. He transformed himself into that character very well. Yeah, this movie went ahead, and all of a sudden, it became a courtroom drama. And there was no Joker esque kind of things happening. You will, you know, I think a lot of people were hoping that he would be more of the Joker, like in the comic books and stuff, and you know, and things like that. But the fact that they introduced Harvey Dent and it was just a name, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Harvey yeah. Quinn, um, I think that. Lady Gaga was not the person for like uh you know for Harley the Quinn, but then again, yeah. neither was Joaquin Phoenix, and he did a good job. Mm-hmm. I just think that they took that character in the wrong direction. So yeah, there was just a lot of things that just really bothered me about this, and I think that Todd Phillips probably—I don't think he wanted to make this movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my understanding. I think it's like he didn't want to make this movie. I think he just I think he did this movie just so to say, hey, listen, the first one made a billion dollars and I'm just gonna do whatever the hell I want. Yeah. <laughs> and not be checked for it. Yeah. I I really liked the cinematography. Um I really liked the acting. I just don't think the writing was good. And like you said, it was, they could have made that an hour. Uh, what's that? Law and order. Um, <laughs> and it would have been just as. It was like uh, an probably SVU. would have been more entertaining. Yeah. Right. And, Law and order SVU episode with the Joker. I feel like. Yeah. His, meeting i feel like every scene with joaquin phoenix his acting was amazing but i feel like they forced his meeting with harley that did not that did not make any sense i don't like that they took their relationship in such a strange direction you don't have to keep in line with the comics but that just went way off and then towards the end the way she just walks away that's not the joker and harley quinn that's not how that's just not their relationship and i just felt like they i felt like they really had an opportunity to play on that and they messed it up um and it was they with it was too long i think you could have really made that an hour fun little series to throw on to hbo max or something and uh I, that would have been way more entertaining to watch than this. It's interesting you say that. It does seem like something that w- that should have been made for streaming. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, oh, here's something to tie you over before the actual movie. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it it wasn't that. And it's like you said, you know, Har- it, it wasn't the Hardy Quinn that we know of. And the fact that... Here's the thing. A lot of people got pissed off from what I hear that he renounced the Joker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all of a sudden he wasn't the Joker anymore, and people were like, "Whoa, wait a minute, what the hell? What's going on with that?" And it's because I don't know. It's just all of a sudden he's not the Joker. Harley Quinn not doesn't want to have anything to do with him. Yeah. And so she walks away. But one of the biggest things that really bothered me about this movie was the singing. I, one, I don't think it should have been a musical. But if it was going to be a musical, I think then you know what, be a musical. This was more, first of all, Todd Phillips actually, from what they said, was that they had them sing off key. So that's why, for me, it bothered the crap out of me, you know, this movie, Mm -hmm. you know, this movie, because, you know, Lady Gaga, who has a phenomenal voice, she would sing. But then Joaquin Phoenix, who actually can sing because he did uh, Walk the Line. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so they could have had a great powerhouse there of, you know, people that can actually sing, but they had him sing off key. So that's why none of the musical, I would say none of the musical, uh, scenes or anything like that really 
I can't think of not a single musical scene that I could go, wow, that was pretty awesome between both of them. Mm. Nothing like that. Yeah. And so that's why. And then it seemed like most of it was in his head. And sometimes it didn't seem that way, which was yeah. kind of crazy. But yeah, it was just it was this was a movie that I just did not understand why. What I was watching, why it was happening. You know, and it's uh, it's like you said, you know, like it was beautifully shot. But not I mean, it wasn't a movie that I, I, it's not a movie I could sit there. And, I, and you know, I, I have a friend that he said that he watched it a second time and he was able to appreciate it the second time more than the first time. Uh, was I, that Adam? Yes. <laughs> and I just I just can't. Uh, uh, I might watch it again and maybe appreciate it one percent more. Yeah. But I just don't see myself doing that. <laughs> I don't see myself doing it as either. Uh, honestly, my first thought, because I had said to you guys, I actually watched the movie. I fell asleep. <laughs> and three quarters into the film, I fell asleep, obviously. I had to go back to it. Go again. And you guys said, hey. You got to watch the last quarter, and which I did. And I'm like, what am I watching? And I had so much hopes for this film for what it was. Now, mind you, I got a screener, everybody. Yeah, I'll see it. I got a screener. But the fact that I fell asleep through it is a problem. Because there was so much stagnation on what was going on within the character of Arthur Fleck. And now I find out, oh, okay, uh, Harley Quinn is not like what we got from the Batman, the animated series. The Harley Quinn that we get literally is, oh, she was a therapist at one point well in the, in the she in the, studied it she studied in the movie she, she studied it and right. then she put herself voluntarily into the asylum mm-hmm. and then through that she creates this relationship with arthur which is an infatuation obviously obviously so uh and then um she gets in his head and then Arthur at the time is in a form of turmoil because of what he had done on um, what was the uh, Mari Franklin show and killing Mari Franklin and then dealing with the uh, repercussions and what he had done on live TV. And then harboring this, uh, what, what would you call it? A, uh, I don't know. Uh, what would you call it? A uh, infatuation of celebrity. And then he is the Joker. So he's dealing with this duality of himself. And then you got Harley Quinn herself, Harley Quinzel. And she's infatuated with Arthur. And they're. She's infatuated with Joker. Well, the Joker character, which is Arthur. Yeah. Right. So and it's just like, what the, what's going on? But I have issues within the film too, because we see her at certain points and we don't see her at certain points in certain scenes. I don't know if you saw that, but I have seen it. Where she is supposed to be in a scene and she's not. Well, one of the things that people have questioned is, so how is it that she got to visit him? In his cell. In his Correct. cell. Now, they, they're saying that because she's rich, maybe that, you know, she probably, you know, bribed somebody to get in there. So mm-hmm. be it. Yeah. Um, But it, she was just basically a groupie. And the the one thing that a lot of fans know is that the Joker and Harley Quinn, they have a very turbulent relationship. Oh, yeah, they do. You know, it's toxic, and at the same time, they're both crazy. 
Um, and they love each other. They love each other up until uh, now. Re- yeah. Now, you know, recently she pretty much hates him. Uh, <laughs> you know, so she doesn't have a relationship with him anymore. Uh, she has a relationship, I think, with um, what is it? Um, the chick with the uh, the plants. Oh, really, poison ivy. Poison ivy. So that's what's that. Yeah, that, yeah, that, so- that, that that's on the DC. Uh, uh, so that's actually a Max, I think, right? Right, but I think they've actually translated some of that into the comic books, which Wait, whatever. Yeah, but the thing is that, yeah, the like if as much as I hate the movie, um, suicide, the first Suicide Squad, that okay. relationship with Joker, who was a uh, Jared Leto, um, that's basically what it is: is her always after him, trying to please him, and he's basically just kind of using her. In whichever way she want, you know, he can. And and she just forgives him all the time because he basically um got into her head and she just adores him for that. In this one, it just seems like Lady Gaga was or Lady Gaga's uh Harley Quinn was just more of a groupie. And as soon as the Joker persona, which he renounced went away she just went oh that's it then i'm not interested in this guy anymore you know yeah. so it yeah. it was just kind of very very vague and yeah maybe that was the point maybe they they wanted to do a just a switcheroo i guess i i a I don't lot mind of this somebody. Conversation is me trying to make sense of something that can't be made <laughs> sense of so bear with me but i don't i, don't, I just i that was it's very vague in a sense that they're trying to make it more realistic to the people out there in this world. And which the group, the people, a lot of people go to movies to go away, step away from reality to go into fantasy. And this didn't really stereotype anything that was fantasy. It stereotyped basically everything that was reality and everybody's like well i don't want to see what was what's reality i i um I, i'll yeah, just but watch Mark, it. yeah the first movie is still reality it's like the mm-hmm. joker based on reality the first movie was just yeah. watching a man descent into madness because of his environment you know, but people picked on him. Uh, you know, he has this disorder where he laughs and people find him, you know, strange because of that. His mom letting him think that, you know, he's so wonderful and all these things. <laughs> and, you know, and it's just Sorry. all these things that made that movie. And you watch yeah. Joaquin Phoenix basically transform himself. Like you, you everybody knows about the Joker character. Yeah, no. and so in that movie, you got to see about three or four times where the Joker character seemed like he was coming out. Mm-hmm. You know, everything from when he shot the um, when he shot the uh, those uh, kids in the uh, in the subway mm-hmm. to when he it, until like there were so many parts where you see him and you go, "Oh wow, there is how the Joker is getting born." But then the next scene will take it up a notch up until the very end when he was on top of a car and, he, and everybody was just shouting his name. Mm-hmm. And you're like, OK, there is the birth of the Joker in this movie. Again, it was just a courtroom drama with some singing. But it wasn't the Joker. It wasn't like, hey, now let's see who the joke. Now let's see more of that madness of this man. This basically became a, hey, that, you know, he's delusional and he has mental issues and all these things, which the first movie kind of covered. In the first movie, you kind of get that, oh, yes, you know, this movie definitely deals with, uh, mm. you know, mental health yeah. issues and things like that. But it was just something so magical about it and so great. This one, again, courtroom drama that just didn't go anywhere and the only time I would say that this movie got interesting was when he became the Joker to try to defend himself. Mm-hmm. You saw the actual Joker come out. Mm-hmm. And but then, then it's gone. it was gone. 
it was just gone. And you're like, wait a minute. You just, you had it. You almost had it. Like all of a sudden I, I got interested in the mm-hmm. movie. I was like, okay, this is becoming interesting. And then it just went away. Yeah. They, they dropped the ball in a sense of where the character was that they wanted to create. And if they d- were able to do a third, which if, I don't know. By the end of this, no. The, uh, There's Todd, no plans for Todd that. Phillip, Todd Phillips actually said that he does not want to make a third, and yeah. Joaquin Phoenix is not going to make a third. He's not going to do a third, obviously. But the thing is, is that, like you said, uh, it's the characterization of the character itself in the comics portrayed into it to make it what it should be. Will we ever see Michael Keaton? Yeah. You know, stand face to face with him no will we ever see uh george clooney no, well, this know. this was Christian not the, Bale, this is not a anything. joker in any of those universes exactly but the thing is is that we would never see a batman face to face with this person at this point uh i which think I'm, which i'm fine with but i don't mind i don't mind taking a ride with this man becoming the Joker and now becoming, because the Joker is also a, uh, what I would say, a criminal genius. Yeah. I don't mind seeing him become that. I don't mind going on that journey with him into like this madness where he becomes who he does, who he becomes. Yeah. You know, that I don't mind. I don't have to see other heroes. I mean, that's right. Like the first movie, what did it do? It showed uh, a little bit of the Joker. No, I'm sorry. It showed uh, Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. Right. And I don't recall what else there was. I mean, the fact that it says Gotham, you know, was whatever. But what well, Batman Begins is what you're talking about. Yeah. No, not Batman Begins. Oh, oh, OK. Well, I think <laughs> the the whole time I'm watching, I'm I'm expecting this moment. I kept waiting. I was like, OK, this is when he's going to escape. And mm-hmm. this is when the Joker's going to be the Joker. Um, but it it never happened. And when he does escape, they missed a great opportunity when he was in the backseat of the car with those fans to at least give us something for the last 15, 20 minutes. Right. But, and they still yeah. didn't do it. But I think this would have been a better prequel than a sequel because this was this to me was the Arthur Fleck show. I enjoyed what Joaquin Phoenix did with this character this time around. I just don't think that the writers did him enough justice to to let him bring out the Joker that, like you said, Rob, that that's what we watched right. this movie to see. Yeah, I mean that the guards. This whole movie, he was just beat up. Everyone was just beating him up. Even Harley was, she lift him up. But then the second he showed his Arthur self, she's, she's gone. And that scene when the guards, he's on TV as the Joker and they, he comes back and they just immediately take him to the show. I don't even understand what happened. There. In the shower, well, I, he got he got raped in the he shower. Did? Which, okay, yeah, yeah he, which is yeah. like why? Why, why, what, why show it, this scene? Why show that? But what there was no to me. I maybe I need to go back and watch it again. But it, it didn't make sense film. to me. Sure, the the guards annoyed, but you're that angry because he did this on TV. So you're gonna do? I just. It did not make a lick of sense to me, that whole scene, and I don't think it was necessary. If they wanted to put him in the hole so that she magically shows up to do what they did, they could have got him in the hole. What was the point in that? And I just don't understand that guard being so angry that that's the path that they took. I mean, they could have been angry and everything, but my, my, my whole thing was like, all right, so you're angry and you did this. What was the outcome of that? Mm. And there was none. Right. You know, they would have they would have followed through with like, you know, hey, now he got angry and now he became the Joker. Now he goes back after the guards for what they did to him. You know, then sure, do it that. Would have been useful, <laughs> right? Yeah. 
but they didn't even do that. And so one of the things that I heard was that, you know, so Todd Phillips, because Warner Brothers said, hey, you know, for $55 million, you made us a billion dollars. Go ahead and make a second movie. They never did test screenings with this. No. Nope. <laughs> they didn't do test screenings with DC fans. Nope. And so it was an unchecked movie that just got out into the public, which I'm sure if they would have done those test screenings, they would have come back to him and says, yo, no. That yeah. no, don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't gonna happen. So, but once again, I just didn't. I didn't see the reason for it to be a musical. And if they were gonna do a musical, man, they should have knocked it out of the park. I mean, you have one yeah. of the greatest singers in the world there. Then let her sing, you know. And then if and if this is in his mind, then in his mind, like all of us do, you know, we may sing and we might ha- be off key, but in our mind, we, we we sound phenomenal. They let it be, you know, that he sounds great in his mind. But yeah. instead, it was just, there was so, it was just two people that are just, could, couldn't be, like, they were so opposite of each other when it came to the singing part of it. Yeah, I agree. Well, I read that they, when the scenes where, it's actually the two of them together that that was meant to be not perfect, very low tone, kind of off key. But then when they were in his full fantasy, that's when they were more, it was more of a show. They were louder. They were clearer. I read that was on purpose. Right. Oh, no, he was told to sing off key. He was told to, you know, not to try to have the um, a better voice that more keep it more under the Arthur Fleck kind of you know voice, and I guess the uh, the the way he sounds. But I thought that was a mistake. I just think that if it was in his mind, he should have sounded like he was you know a rock star. And right. then if I he agree. starts, and but then and then that could have given it you know that could have given it away, meaning like oh. When he's singing for real, he sounds like crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, when, and when he sings in his brain, he's like all of a sudden a superstar. Yeah. You know, I I could have taken that, but I don't. It was, like I said, it was just this movie was all over the place. It was, and unfortunately, they did a character that in the first movie was just so great and just such a good gem to look at and to watch that movie. They should have followed it up with, hey, let's just give you more of that. Dive head and, first and, into insanity. Yeah, but it's when they and when they announced, you know, Harley Quinn, I was like, OK, that's really cool. You know that uh, and they're going to have Lady Gaga. Sure. But then they said, oh, it's going to be a musical. And I was like, what? <laughs> are, they, <laughs> are, are they kidding about this? And I thought at first I thought they were kidding about it. But I was like, oh, I guess they're not. They wanted that uh, fan favorite, which is Harley Quinn, I think. They did, but they I think they could have, just like they did. Look, if you take the Joker and you reimagine him the way you did in the first movie, mm-hmm. take Harley Quinn and reimagine her in such a way that you take it so far out there like you did in the first movie. Mm-hmm. But again, she was so underutilized and she felt more of a group, like a groupie instead of, you know, whatever, that that's why I was just like underwhelmed by it. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, I was very disappointed in how they let her character, character play out. It didn't have, like I said earlier, didn't have to match the Harley Quinn that we know, but when she had, she showed up at Gotham as the therapist that interrogates him for however many hours to see if he's fit to stay in trial. Um, yeah. That would have made more sense to me, but just her randomly him walking by and she just happens to be there. And then, Oh, uh, this guard that absolutely loathes him, but it's like, hey, I'm going to take you to a singing class and <laughs> put them right next to each other. And just a bunch of weirdness unfolds after that that just did not make a whole lot of sense to me. 
And then it seems like she, according to what I've been seeing, like, it seems like she planned it all. Like she planned That's for what him. She said, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's just like, I don't know. It's like you said. So like in the original um, animated uh, show, and I think in the comic books and everything, she is the therapist that's at Arkham. Yeah, at mm-hmm. Arkham trying to deal with the, the Joker. Joker. And then she and falls she, in love with she him. She falls in love with him because he then, uh, him being the person that he is, all of a sudden he turns things around on her. Mm-hmm. And then she, all of a sudden, you know, starts to... Succumbs uh, to his... Uh, to his madness and to his, you know, to his way of being and all that stuff, yeah. and that would have been fantastic to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I all of a sudden this that. could have been yeah. like it's not only the Joker, but this is now the Harley show, where now you see her descend into madness. Yeah, and that would have been fantastic to see that, and then see probably the Joker, like you know, kind of like uh, just nurture that along. As they're mm-hmm. going, as they're going crazy and doing all kinds of crazy things around the town, and just you know raising hell, that would have been fantastic to see. And yet, if you did something like that, then I think a musical can actually come out of that. It would have been fun because yeah. it would have been fun. Yeah, it would have been fun, but it also would have been frightening because now you're going, oh my god, these guys are like really taking it so far. Yeah, they're manipulating the story of the character and moving forward. And they could actually do a third film where it would, if they do a third film, they could actually go into Harley Quinn and the Joker. Let's together. say that even if they didn't do a third film, let's say this that was it. That would have been satisfying. Yeah. You know, as long as you did it in a certain way that, hey, these two crazy people, you know, now they're like, you know, they're like the Gotham City, you know, criminal duo. Yeah. And somehow hint at, oh, okay, now there is a Batman coming out. Or mm-hmm. hint at other, well, I would say, other criminals. Yeah. You know, from their uh, rogue gallery. That would have been great. Mm-hmm. Like Clayface or... Anybody. Anybody else. You know, you could have done, you know, another Riddler. Penguin. You could have done another Penguin. Whatever it is. Or whatever. It's just... Just it to keep it you hanging a little bit. Yeah, it keep you hanging in the sense that you go, wow... This world is now developing. Mm -hmm. And even though they might say, no, this is the last movie. This is just to show you that, hey, yeah, this is where it starts. And that's it. It would have left you wanting for more, even if you might not ever get more. But Mm -hmm. you would have been like, oh, okay, that was great. That was a great way to leave it off. Like, because right now, let me tell you, I don't know if you guys have been watching The Penguin on HBO Max. I love it. Obsessed. Oh, Becky's been watching it constantly. (laughs) Freaking fantastic. Oh, my gosh. You want to do a podcast with me? (laughs) (laughs) It's basically The Sopranos in Gotham. That's all it is. And it's been absolutely amazing. I mean, it, I just can't say enough about it. It's they got it right, hundred yeah. percent. I can't. I mean, there's not. A, there's nothing I can even. I would have to really look to find something that I did not like about that show. Yeah, yeah. Joker, Bali, adieu. However you say that. There <laughs> were some. Uh, if I can <laughs> say a few things that I liked, which are mainly shots. Um, mm-hmm. I loved when they were taking him to meet his attorney and they all they're walking through the rain and there's that overhead shot of the colorful umbrellas against this just black and white dark. And he's just standing there wet and in the rain. I thought that was a brilliant shot. And then um, when they put him back in his cell And he's got the, uh, he lights the cigarette, which again is another moment. I thought, ooh, here comes the Joker. Correct. Um, But it went nowhere. But they closed the door and he, it's the sunlight, the light behind him, but you can't really see his face. And then he lights that cigarette. I thought that was uh, a really good shot. I liked when the the courthouse blew up. Um, I need to ask. Really quick, I watched this three times, and I'm 99.9% certain when he's waking up and walks past and you see Harvey Dent, 
laying there. Half his face was messed up. Mm-hmm. So interesting. Is that right? Interesting yeah. you say that, yes. A lot of people go, oh, yeah, you know, it got mutilated. And when I looked very clearly, like, look, it has scratches. But the, but it's, but you get it. It's foreshadowing. It's yeah. foreshadowing, it's correct. Like, it's a reference oh, to the comics. Oh, no, though. Was, he got his face I think that bit. was a yeah. shot meant right. to and show And that was a, that, that, a, another missed opportunity. Yeah. Because yeah. what they should have done is really messed off his face. But they didn't. It just had some scratches on it. I was like, come on. It was just <laughs> enough, though, to make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't enough for me. I needed to see more gore. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he wanted to see the, uh, you know, you know, half well, his you face. Gone, your eyes, the dark really rises. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, about ha- go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go, go, go. I did not care for. I. D- I didn't care for the testimony of the neighbor who uh, he thought he was dating for so long, but I oh, did like yeah. that they gave us flashbacks into the first movie, movie. to yeah, because that was really the only. Well, did he kill her in the first one? No. He left her alone. He, he left her like, alone. Like, yeah. It, it was one of the things that, where he stopped that's her. That's when it all clicked to him that he he is not in a his Real reality is not reality. Right. And that's yeah. when he okay. yeah. really started to slip into the Joker. Like he, he didn't realize what reality and fantasy left off. And then it all came together. And then she actually realized that and that that's what happened in the first film. Right. I'm glad that they actually did bring her back for that. That was actually really good. I just like that it gave us the flashbacks. But I would him. say I would say one of the parts that I really, really loved mm-hmm. was um who's the actor, the little person that uh that was oh. in the first movie? Oh puddles. Puddles. Yeah. His testimony was incredible and heartbreaking oh it was you know he was you know he like joker's like i left you alone and it's like no it's like no man you became my nightmare Mm -hmm. yeah you are my nightmare from this point on for the rest of my life destroyed my life literally yeah and he he was just it was such a heartbreaking moment and it was just like wow and the way he walked away and everything, it was just like, this is a broken man because even the person, the one person that he trusted, the one person that accepted him for who he was mm-hmm. basically yeah. betrayed that trust. And it just made him feel like, you know, he could never go to sleep again because of what he saw from him. Yeah, and right. that was such a great moment. I was like, why aren't there not better just like moments like this throughout the movie? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that that scene I would say I, I liked a lot. That's that was a great, great, great scene. I liked the scene where he was being interviewed by the TV reporter. I thought that was going to be. I thought that was another moment where something better was going to happen. But I really liked his pushback when the guys asking him questions, and he's like, "Do you really care?" Um, hmm. this is an honest. That was an honest. The one honest moment I think Arthur Fleck had. He's like, you don't care, <laughs> and he's or he's right, y'all. I'm just a. I'm just a a, a story. What do you call it, yeah, yeah a story. <laughs> yeah, uh, something for y'all to entertainment. That's what he. That's what I am to y'all is right. is entertainment. Which would have been another opportunity for them to. Turn him be- into some serious entertainment. Oh my god! If he would have just grab, if he would have grabbed the guy right there, like in live, you know, like on live TV, yes. just, you know, beat the crap. I don't know something like that. Something that just brings out the Joker again. And, you know, it would have been nice to see the Joker come back. Like even if he was fighting it, just right. make it seem like okay. So he he does have a double personality. Yeah, it does. You know, but nah, they didn't do that. <laughs> so but very few moments I mean you know what you know what scene I loved 
when uh, Harley and uh, the Joker are coming out of the courthouse singing, going down the steps. Oh, wait, that didn't happen. (laughs) <laughs> because they, because they sure market the crap out of that, and they showed did. it. And they showed it on trailers. You're they right. showed it, and, and, but it's like, oh wait a minute, that didn't it's happen not there. <laughs> but they gave you them singing outside of Gotham, exactly. Or so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's and that's that just seems to be a problem with movies nowadays, where marketing teams are using clips that are not being used in movies just to try to bring people to the uh, theater and people are complaining and people are getting to the point where they're getting tired of it and I'm wondering at what point will they be now held you know accountable for that oh, because oh, you're, like basic, the, you're basically the fake out is what yeah, you're well, saying. it's basically false advertisement yeah, yeah well like kind of like what we're with Rogue One with the TIE fighter <laughs> at that point when you see uh what what's her name uh Jer Inso or uh, uh what's her name uh Jen Jenna or so something like that Jen or so right and they're out there and you think oh she's face to face with this tie fighter at this point and we got that and it was never in the film well from what i read was that they actually filmed that just for the trailer and nothing else. It wasn't even a cut scene. Yeah. Which I think that was sad. Yeah. So. And we never got it. And then it's like, we all get there and it's like, oh, it's not here. Don't get me wrong. Like, I think, like, <laughs> I think Rogue One is a great movie. And I, I love that movie. And I too. started yeah. hating that movie. I went to the movies and I saw it and I was like, uh, what the hell did I just watch? And as, <laughs> as he went by, he I started t- to love it. As time went by and then I saw Andor, mm-hmm. I went back to the movie and I went, oh, I actually like this movie a lot now yeah, because I- of Andor. But it just, it, and I think it was, again, because of those things, you know, you, you got to see uh, something Gen- that never Jen happened Urso with the plans running on the beach. That never yeah. happened. Yeah. You got to see a lot of little, you know, and it was like, what happened there? And of course, later you find out that they did a lot of reshoots because the movie just wasn't working the way they wanted to. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but this is what happens with marketing teams where it's like, well, we need to get something out there. And it's like, well, what I have is I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. Well, we'll use it on, you know, for now. Yeah. You know, so. But I, I always refer to that as a reference, too, because I do. I did love that movie when it first came out because it was, it was the untold story that we never got from between episode four to episode five. Uh, that in between no, episode moment. three and four. Uh, it was uh, before episode uh, three, three uh, four oh. before before episode four. Yeah, before episode four. Yeah, correct. And it's like because Leia talks about the plans and the whole whatever that happened before it, and we all wanted to see that movie, and it they created a whole saga within this particular movie that we didn't know we wanted and we got it. And I loved it from the day one that I saw it. And it took me a few years. <laughs> it took you a few years, but <laughs> the thing was, years. I loved it. And I have the poster still to this day. And yeah, everybody's like, Oh, Rob's going to try to buy them from Mark. Probably. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I just, I, I think that, uh, when it comes to like Joker, I mean, will I will I like this movie in five years? Probably maybe. not. Maybe, maybe. But <laughs> right now, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, I I was not impressed. Honestly, uh, I had high hopes for it. I, I could see where movie. they were going with it, but honestly, in my honest opinion, it was a nice try. But yeah, as of today, I give it a three. <laughs> I give it about a three as well. But yeah. the thing was, is like, give it another two or three, maybe four years. I'll probably give it maybe a four. 
three and, and a half. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So or it might go down to a two. <laughs> yeah. <I don't> know. <laughs> um, can I tell the theory? Yeah, go ahead. You okay. have a theory, yeah, which I'm interested in hearing. It's not my theory. I can't take credit for it. But the theory mm-hmm. did make me think. All right. So I want to start with the opening of the movie with the cartoon. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you've got me in my shadow. And what happens in the cartoon? The shadow separates, takes over, mm-hmm. and then leaves, abandons him to be destroyed by the cops or whatever. So... I'm going to, can I say people's names on here? This is a Reddit post. Can I read it? Yeah. Well, okay. if they have, if they have a Reddit, um, I guess, login, you could do that, I guess. Well, it's, it's Screen Rant shared it. Does That's that mean fine. I can read it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'm going to give them credit. Quirky Paws 2910. <laughs> Maybe the person that kills him in the end isn't. Heath Ledger Joker. Maybe it was Jack Nicholson Joker. Ha ha. Just kidding. Okay, hear this. <laughs> Maybe Arthur, after realizing he wasn't the Joker and in his fragile mental state, the person that stabs him to death is himself. What we saw take place was in his mind, and it would make sense given the whole conceit. Maybe this is where we truly see him become the Joker killing the part of his identity that was Arthur, like he's finally had just one very bad day and snapped. And now there is only the Joker. No more Arthur. Arthur is dead. Kind of like a fight club ending, but this time Tyler Durden actually wins type of scenario. And then he goes on to say, or maybe they no longer wanted to do this Joker shit and ran out of ideas, so they just killed him off or something. <laughs> but- that, that sounds about right. i read that and i immediately thought about the cartoon me and my shadow and i was like you know what i'm gonna choose to believe this because then this whole movie goes up to like a 3.25 instead of a (laughs) three i think it's a i think it's a cool cool theory and i'm i'm going with it because i need to idea I really do like that idea. Well, I don't really? know if you guys know this, but so the first movie mm-hmm. was supposed to end with Arthur slicing up his face. Yes. Uh, with the just smile, like, just like, like Heath Ledger, Heath right? Heath Ledger. But and they, Chris, they, Christopher Nolan, who was still working with Warner Brothers, correct. But it stopped to that. Yes. Because I he said, yeah, he said, no, this is not the nolan you know batman universe universe yeah yeah um because he now for this movie which showed him you know showed uh that character yeah that character that killed uh arthur that all of a sudden you know that he was gonna have you know he started slicing his face people thought oh that's the joker from you know dark knight and this and he actually said i think in a few either somewhere he said no this is not supposed to be the same joker Exactly. This, this has nothing to do with uh with the uh the Nolan universe at mm-hmm. all. Um but he couldn't stop it because he wasn't, you know, working. He he had nothing to do with any of that. Yeah. And he didn't approve any of that. But a lot of people thought that was the first thing people thought. It was like, oh, that's supposed to be the Heath Ledger Joker. And it's like, no. <laughs> yeah, this is just again Todd Phillips doing whatever he wanted and not having any uh control or somebody control him uh <laughs> not to do shit like that exactly but yeah that's interesting what you know becky the uh that story um i think i think a lot of people are going to look at this movie and look at a lot of theories mm-hmm. to try I, I think in their heads they're trying to justify why this movie should be good Mm-hmm. And they're going to try to go find all <laughs> kinds of shit. Uh, all kinds of me. stuff. <laughs> Everything. I've been all they, over the internet. Yeah, it's like the, people are going to just try to look for stuff so they can go, yeah. oh, wait a minute. You know, now this makes sense. And now, you know, now I love this movie because of that. Oh, I did. Um, and to that day, you know, I, I'm not that <laughs> deep in that sense. So somebody's going to have to, you know, prove it to me and show it to me. So you're saying I just didn't convince you. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. <laughs> well, that sounds that sounds you know 
So in his mind, he looked like another person? Well, here's the question. I would believe that if that character that stabbed him, every time he was in the room, it just seems like nobody else saw that character. Like, if you go back into the movie, you're like, did anybody ever notice that one particular guy in that, there? That, that, that actual, uh, you know, nurse or, or person, whoever that was. Yeah. Orderly. Was that yeah. person like always, you know, you know, like when you go back to a movie where you, they tell you, Hey, it was always in his imagination. When you go back, you go, Oh yeah. Like I one flew over the cuckoo's see, nest. It, you see it the same nurse. The, you see all the clues. <laughs> well, more like, you know, the sixth sense, yeah. let's say yeah. in the sixth sense, there, there's so many clues that just give it away saying this person is not alive. Spoilers for whoever didn't see, you know, sixth sense. But um, <laughs> so it, yeah, so it would have been great if, like, if I go back now. Oh, this person, nobody acknowledges this person. Only Arthur sees him, and then maybe that could have been the Joker, like you just said. And so the Joker finally stabs him, and then now he's reborn. So it's basically him getting rid of himself or whatever it is. But I believe that other people did see him. So that's why for me, it's like, well, okay, maybe that theory doesn't fly as well. Again, some people are trying to justify there. I know people are trying to fight for, you know, for the movie. <laughs> They're doing I'm going to watch they- it again. And I'm going to take notes on every one of those scenes. Uh, you and t- we are all going to get back together. <laughs> <laughs> you let, and I'm you going let, to convince you let both me know. of you this movie was freaking brilliant. <laughs> you let me know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You let Bob know. <laughs> Mark's like, uh, don't even call me, please. No, no, no. Yeah, Rob will be like, all right, uh, this is going to be uh, Film Tropolis, uh, episode one. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah one, one, one day i'll get that going <laughs> by the way uh fantasy picks movie edition everybody that's what we were talking about <laughs> what oh uh that's what uh rob had and he's changing over to right yeah, we're just you know we're uh, we're coming up with a basically just a whole new format and it's basically a new podcast. Right. So I used to have a podcast, of course, uh, Fantasy Films uh, Movie Edition, which Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, which um, what we were trying to do is do it just like Fantasy Picks Football or something. Okay, like that. that's what I thought. I was like, yeah, Wait. yeah, we were what we were trying to do is say, okay, we're going to take the movies that didn't make it in the box office that were over hyped and probably oh you know big budget movies and by the way that's another thing i talk about you know joker um yeah. and because it didn't work what we were going to do is we were going to do kind of a fantasy pick in other words hey we we're going to pick uh maybe a different script maybe a different director maybe different actors that could have probably Ooh. made the movie better things like that so um, we're probably going to take a little bit of that, but then now we're taking it beyond that and, uh, and doing a lot more. It's, uh, we're hoping that probably by early next year. That we'll... sounds like fun. So, yeah. Cheap plug everybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but going back to budget. So again, the first film was $55 million made a billion dollars. This thing was two hundred million dollars, and I'm saying to myself, "Where the hell did the two hundred million dollars go?" Exactly. <laughs> was hundred and fifty million of that for just Lady Gaga, or or Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix? <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. I mean, I would say salaries had to be because it was not that, that. I don't think this movie had any. Any more flair than the first one did, except I mean, the first the one had Robert De Niro. Well, no, yeah. I'm sorry, I meant the like, oh, like visual effects and, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, just the explosion or, that or, happened, and or even the rental within New York City too. Regardless, to film in New York City is ridiculously overpriced. Well, because I don't think right now they have the uh, tax exempt exempt. Incentives that uh, normally other cities give, mm. so that's why you don't. I mean, uh, there has been a lot of filming in New York, 
I'm not sure what the tax incentives are right now. I know sometimes they make it very attractive for uh, studios to say, hey, we're going to film in this city or this city or maybe yeah. in this uh, country. Yeah, because the, um, uh, the stairwell scene is always in the Bronx. And right. That's where it is. Um, they did do certain scenes within New York City, which I know because it's been filmed on YouTube. And they did have at least a week of two weeks of worth of filming right with Lady Gaga and everything else going up the stairwell as well as going up to the stairwell to the uh the court case too and that was a big huge thing too that was a big to do and that takes a lot of money honestly yeah but, but not 200 million dollars dude no <laughs> no, not two hundred million dollars. Yes, but and a uh, lot of the and not a lot, and I think a lot of the songs that they were um, singing, yeah, might be public domain. Possibly, I have to double check on that. So yeah, no, I don't see. I, I don't know. Todd Phillips right now probably you know has a Swiss bank account. <laughs> And a hundred million, a hundred million of that is in that bank account right now. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I don't know. All right. All right. Well, uh, I think uh, that about covers what we were going to talk about with uh, Joker. Fully ado, that came out in twenty twenty four. So I guess we can all agree that we just weren't happy with this movie. Correct. I would agree. Yeah, I okay. was not very happy at all with the movie. I, uh, Which... If I watch it again, I, I'm i going to be really depressed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a DC girl. I love Joker's my favorite villain. I had high hopes. Mark can uh, vouch that when we talked about having this discussion. I was ready to stand on my high horse and defend this movie with all that I have, but I fell off yeah. the horse and it <laughs> trampled me. Yeah. I am nothing but a sad. Well, well, you could always watch the Harley Quinn show uh, that's animated. on. Yeah. What's HBO that about? Max. You never watched it. You no, haven't I, seen that movie. I no. mean, that, oh, the show. You, you have got to see that. I made it's a, a few here. seasons. Uh, you got to watch show it. On Max? Question mark. Yes. yes. So what's it called? <laughs> Harley that's Quinn. Harley Quinn. Well, that's helpful. <laughs> watch it. It's amazing. Kaylee Cuoco, who is. That's what you were talking about the other day. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, ask me what I'm doing when we hang out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the first episode will give you, uh, how can I say, will give you kind of like a, a view onto what you're going to get into for the rest of the season. Exactly. Excellent. Because the first time I saw it, my mouth dropped open and said, oh, this is not for kids. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> they Good went to ahead. Know. Yeah, they went ahead and they took this really far. But it's fun with Harley and Poison Ivy. Yeah. And even Kite Man. So Kite Man is a character in Harley Quinn, and they gave him his own show. And that's funny, too. As well as Clayface and a few other people. Yeah, Yeah. but no, Kite Man was the only one that got his own show. That's what I'm saying. That is true. Yeah, Yeah. so it was just like, and out of all characters, you're like, Kite Man, really? But (laughs) it turned out to be very funny and like I said, it's definitely made for adults. It, it is. It is. So, obviously, this show and this podcast is made for adults. So, everybody knows that. So, go watch Holly Quinn on Max and uh, follow Becky as she uh, probably will be responding to her watching, on, whether it be Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. <laughs> I'm just going to start a podcast and just call it me watching TV. (laughs) And I'm just going to watch shows and talk to whoever's out there. And want to have fun. While I'm watching and (laughs) see what happens. Yeah. Just make sure that you don't record the show, too. (laughs) (laughs) 
Because <laughs> then you'll Good get, tip. you know. Then I might yeah, get in a little bit of trouble. You might get yeah. in a little in trouble. You yeah. watching it and commenting on it, it's been done before. Go ahead and do it. Knock yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> as soon as a studio hears any dialogue, they're like, okay, cease and desist. <laughs> oh, no, no. I just mean watch the show and then after. Oh, just I think you I think I like, just like, talk to myself. <laughs> I thought you meant filming yourself watching it. <laughs> Live no, reaction. I guess I would that the title does give that impression. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna rethink that. I'll get back to you. <laughs> well, here's a cool YouTube channel, right? You put on, let's say, Harley Quinn. Yeah. And all it is is just your facial expressions for the next half an hour. Because you'll be like, <gasps> and then you know, or your laugh and stuff <laughs> like that, but then I'm sure somebody would be like, that's all she does. And for some reason, I just got to keep watching. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. <laughs> and you can make money off of that. Everybody. There you go. If, if, <laughs> listen, <laughs> there are people that make way too much money on YouTube for the most dumbest things, man. I mean, any, any, look, I've seen things that are so stupid that people are making money. I was like, any other idea should be brilliant. And it just, you got, there's an audience for everybody. So is, that's true. There is. There is. <laughs> so I think Becky, you watching TV, <laughs> somebody be there. I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch TV with Becky. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> and they'll just put their iPad right next to them. And they'll watch the same thing you're watching and you're reacting at the same, and time. Rea- at the same and, time. And, and even and tell them, like, at the right time, <laughs> I am starting now. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and if it's oh, funny, it. both of you will laugh at the same time. If it's scary, both of you will, you know, probably, you know, scream at the same, whatever it is. But yeah, yeah watching. So which one of you are going to start? <laughs> <laughs> she goes, I need somebody else to do actually. Remember, the show is called watch, uh, Watching TV with Becky. <laughs> right. Well, we'll you're going to watch me watching the show. <laughs> you just put, a first it episode. It you right. just put a camera in front of you, then that's it. And once it's done, you hit stop, put it up on YouTube. Done. <laughs> I've never done anything on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> Is it like complicated? Okay, I'm sorry. It's not really that later. complicated, actually, Becky. I could tell I'm actually, like really ready to do a yeah, show. Actually, actually, the new podcast that uh, that we're doing is going to be all YouTube based. <laughs> we're doing everything video wise. That's why we video-wise. have video People cameras. People get to see our mugs. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> I want to be a guest. <laughs> Absolutely. Obviously, we need a lady guest, so Rob knows this. <laughs> well, I am happy to assist and <laughs> plug my new show while helping you with your show. Watching with Becky. <laughs> 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 All right. I, listen, I, I get I get one percent <laughs> for the idea. I don't mind sharing. It takes All a right. village, y'all. Yeah. I, I, I think we kind of conglomerated a lot of this stuff for the, the movie. <laughs> and uh we're at the end of the podcast, so uh with that there are some news. And uh, with that, I'm going to bring up some news regarding Marvel or whatever's happening in Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So the only thing that I have to give is Amber Mid-Thunder has been cast in Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 2. So if you don't remember her, she was in the... uh, She was in Prey. Prey, exactly. And uh, she's going to be in Monarch Season 2. Uh, I actually did that with uh, Ben Beck on the Podcastica Network as well as Wilhelm Podcast. Uh, so did you know, Rob. Well, I was on there too as well. So, I was. Yeah. Uh, we covered uh, Monarch at one point. So you can check that out as well on Wilhelm Podcast or podcastget.com um, but uh, that's the only news that I have as of right now but for you if you want to be uh, 
get in touch with us for any sort of feedback for Panels to Pixels podcast. All you have to do is go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com forward slash or slash Panels to Pixels podcast. And uh, just look at the uh, images below of what we're actually doing and just make a comment. Or if you want to do and send out uh, an email or a formal email, all you have to do is send it to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. And that's panels two spelled out two T O or pixels. And then the number one at gmail.com. Just write out your thoughts and we'll read it on the podcast. Or if you want to feel the need to actually record yourself, which we all have these devices that amazing, you know, you know, you have your phone, you have your computer, everything. Um, just record your thoughts and then just send it as uh, an attachment and then send that through the Gmail, which would be panels to pixels one at gmail.com. Everything comes through as far as with uh, Facebook and Instagram when it comes to that. So, uh, and then on top of that, you have the YouTube channel. So, uh, we could be found on YouTube, which would be panels to pixels podcast. And then, uh, just send your thoughts. Well, that's our, that's it for our show. I want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. I'm Robert. And I'm Becky. And this was, uh, panels to pixels podcast, same podcast, different panel, different pixel. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.